as you might imagine, there are many different ways in which we could combine n disjoint sets having one element to build a set containing every single element. Because of this wide array of possibilities, we're going to analyze how long would it take to take all of the elements and combine them into a single set. And we're going to do this by looking at the amortized runtime. We are going to analyze how many times is the pointer for xi.head going to be updated. In our code, xi.head is updated only once inside of this while loop for a particular node. I only update it once. So when I did this union here, when you perform a union for a node, say x3, it's updated at most once when I perform a union. So x3 was not updated, but y2 was when we performed this union. So we're going to track a single node and analyze how many times could it possibly be updated while I'm combining the sets and building them and eventually getting to having everything combined. So we're going to trace a single node. So let's analyze the life cycle of xi. So xi, let's suppose it starts as small as possible. The smallest xi could be is b by itself. I would then union it with a set and it would be, if, I, if it's going to increase in size, which the only way that xi is updated is if it was unioned with a set that is at least as large as it. So that's in here somewhere in my typeset, it's at least as large as the set containing xi. So if I combine this with something else, who knows? Let's just call it x. We'll have a linked list here. And xi.head might need to get updated to point at x. After having done that, what is the smallest that the set could be after performing a single union? It had to be combined with something when I performed the union. So the smallest the set could be would be two. And then in order to update xi.head, it must be combined with a set that is at least as large. So it must be combined with some other set that has two elements. Therefore, after I combine it with that set, it would have four. And then it would have to be combined with a set that is at least as large. So when you combine that set of size four with another one that's at least size four, you will have at least eight elements in the next set and then at least 16 and at least 32. And we know how multiples of two work now. So whenever you're unioning these together, because of the cleverness of weighted union, where we were only updating xi.head if it was unioned with a set that is at least as large as the one containing it, that gives us some nice benefits here where the sets are always increasing by these powers of two. That's going to get paid dividends and helping us with our runtime. And we've seen this a bajillion times in this course now. How many times does this possibly occur? We're always increasing the size by two. How many times could I possibly increase the size by two if I have n things? You'd bet that better be log base two of n. Is the most number of times that xi.head could be updated. So the most number of times, number of times, xi.head gets updated. I'm going to define that to be a variable, ki, and we just said it's log base two of n. So we know what that value is, and that was for a particular xi. So if I'm looking at the cost of updating xi.head for all the nodes, well, that'll be less than or equal to, because actually up here, this wasn't quite equal. Remember, I said it was at least. So this is actually less than or equal to log base two of n, which means that this is equal to, if I add up the number of times it's updated times the constant cost it takes to update it, for every single vertex, I have n different nodes. The cost of doing the updates is c, and the number of times is ki. Now, this is less than or equal to, the sum 
from i equals 1 to n of c log base 2 of n, and this is less than or equal to c n log base 2 of n. Notice that that is a bound regardless of anything. This is if I wanted to combine everything into one large set, it would be bounded above by n log n for doing all of the unions for every single node. So if we can get a lower bound that's the same, then our amortized runtime will be quite good. So how are we going to find a lower bound? We're looking at the worst case. So let's try and analyze this. We have this written in kind of a funny way. We're going to look at the worst case for building up all of the sets. If we look at this, step one, which I didn't write here, would be we need to perform make set for each xi, which would cost cn, because we need to do it for n different things, and each make set takes constant time. So we would need to have that make set of i for each i for each x i is going to take theta n time. Maybe I'll just write that as c n time. And now we're going to look at how are we going to make the worst possible decision. The worst possible decision we could make would be take every pair of elements and combine them into sets of two. So we make a whole bunch of sets of size two, and then we're going to slowly combine all those sets of size 2 into sets of size 4, combine all those sets of size 4 into sets of size 8, and so on and so on until eventually we combine everything. That is the worst possible thing I could do. So, how many ways could I build sets of size 2? I'm going to combine two things. So there's going to be n over 2 of these calls. We need to be careful here, though, because the cost of each of these weighted unions, there's n over 2 calls each cost 2c. Why 2c? Because we're updating two nodes. We're updating x1.tail and a bunch of all the information for x1 to point to x2. And similarly, we're going to update x2.head to point at x1. So we're doing twice as much work as when we did uh, make set. By similar reasoning, we're going to make n over 4 calls, and they each cost 4c. Similarly, we're going to make n over 8 calls, and they each cost 8c. And we'd repeat this. So we'd have, hmm, this is kind of convenient. This has a total cost of n, and n, and n. And how, many ways, how, how long does it take, exactly what we talked about before, to keep doubling the size? Well, we do that log base 2 of n times. So this is going to be in c n log base 2. Of n. Notice that our analysis here is actually just a strict equality. So the cost of doing these weighted unions in the worst case, the only thing that's not the worst necessarily generic is the fact they use x1 and x2, but it doesn't matter what things they put there. I'm just combining everything to a set of size 2. And this is actually a strict equality that the runtime here is cn log n. And if it's bounded above by cn log n and equal to cn log n for this particular worst case here, we have that the amortized time as a function of n is going to be in theta of how many unions did I do? Well, I did n unions, and the cost was n log n, so the amortized runtime would be theta of log of n. It might not be obvious I did n unions, but if you add up 1 half plus 1 fourth, plus all the way up until infinity. You know the fact they can't write infinity there. Then you get one as your result. So it's not quite n, it's actually n minus one here, but it's close enough that it will not mess with our amortized runtime. So our amortized runtime for weighted union is log of n. That is quite a good runtime. We can't really expect to do much better than that unless we somehow had a constant runtime but this is a really, really, really good runtime that we have achieved here.